There was a lot of talk last week, and uh, we need to pay attention to it. And I don't have an answer for you, but I do have questions for you. First of all, how is it that the group that used to hate the FBI, and quite honestly still does hate the FBI, because they were the ones that were inflicting this, uh, this racism on all of us. They were making sure that these racist laws were keeping the man down. Well, now it seems Democrats, 78% of them, love the FBI. 55% of Republicans don't. Now, why is that? Because we used to love the FBI. We don't trust them anymore. We don't trust the FBI because too many things are going on. And just when the trust of the FBI is being lost, Democrats, who hate supposedly oppression, big government, law enforcement, they love the FBI. The IRS, only 50% have a positive view of the IRS, 50% of Republicans. Damn near 70% of Democrats, 68%. Can I just ask you a non-political, who has a positive, who's like, you know what I really like? You know who I really like? Oh, those IRS agents, they are so great. I just, they are, I can't wait. I've had several of them over for dinner, uh, you know, after, after uh, you know, my anal probe that they did. I thought, you know, you guys are so great. Why don't you come on over for dinner? Who has that? The EPA, 66% of Democrats love the EPA, 52% of Republicans. The CIA, 62% of Republicans, 69% of the Democrats. All of these things are going up with Democrats. I thought you didn't like the big state. I thought, I, I thought, it, I thought it was coming from the Marxist side that uh, the CIA created AIDS. I mean, it's certainly came from Russia. So why is it that everybody on the left is loving them so much? Because they have fallen into the clutches of the left. And no matter what anybody says, the left, the left loves the big state. Communism, socialism, Marxism, they love state. So now when... Someone comes out and says, hey, hang on just a second. Was the FBI involved at all in January 6th? The media immediately goes into full spin mode protecting the FBI and talking to people like John Brennan, who is so very credible, um, about is there a possibility that the FBI was involved? Well... Let's take it from, well, let me take it from Glenn Greenwald, because there's a couple of things that Glenn Greenwald pointed out on this, this uh, report that came out from the Revolver News. The original report says Glenn Greenwald, published by Revolver News and then amplified by Fox News' Tucker Carlson, documented ample evidence of FBI infiltration of the three key groups at the center of the January 6th investigation the Oath Keepers, the Proud Boys, and the three presenters, uh, presenters noted how many alleged riot leaders from these groups have not yet been indicted, while low-level protesters have been aggressively charged with major felonies and held without bail. Many of the alleged plot leaders have thus far been shielded from charges. So the first question is, why? If those three the Oath Keepers, the Proud Boys, and the Three Percenters, why weren't the leaders of those groups charged? Why were just the low-hanging fruit? Why were they the only ones that got indicted? If it was something that was coming from these organizations officially. Glenn Greenwald says, the implications of these facts are obvious. It seems extremely likely that the FBI had numerous ways to know of any organized plots regarding the January 6th riot, just as the U.S. intelligence community, by its own admission, 
had ample advanced clues to the 9-11 attack, but according to their excuse, tragically failed to connect the dots. There is no doubt that the FBI has infiltrated at least some, if not all, of these groups, which it has been warning about for years that they pose a grave national security threat with informants and or undercover FBI agents. It is known that the Proud Boy leaders, Enrique Taro, uh, has served as an FBI informant in the past, and the disrupted 2020 plot by the three percenters, the members that tried to kidnap Governor uh, Gretchen Whitmer, was shaped and driven by what the Wall Street Journal reported were FBI undercover agents and confidential informants. What would be shocking and strange is not if the FBI had embedded informants and other infiltrators into the groups planning the January 6th Capitol riot. What would be shocking and strange, bizarre and inexplicable, is if the FBI did not have those groups under trite control. And yet the suggestion that the FBI informants may have played some role in the planning of the January 6th riot was instantly depicted as something akin to the 9-11 truthers, the COVID uh, lab leak theory, which turns out to be true, the CIA's role in the assassination of JFK. This reaction is partly confounding given how often the FBI did exactly this during the first war on terror and how commonplace discussions of this tactic were in the mainstream liberal circles. Over the last decade, I reported, according to Glenn Greenwald, on countless cases for The Guardian and The Intercept, where the FBI targeted some young American Muslims they viewed as easily manipulated due to financial distress, emotional problems, or both and then deployed informants and undercover agents to dupe them into agreeing to join terrorist plots that, that had been created, designed, and funded by the FBI itself, only then to congratulate themselves for breaking up the plot which they themselves initiated. As asked in one headline about this particularly egregious entrapment case, Why does the FBI have to manufacture its own plots if terrorism and ISIS are such grave threats? Mother Jones even published, he says, an outstanding lengthy investigation by a reporter entitled The The Informations, which asked, the FBI has built a national uh, or a massive network of spies to prevent another, another domestic attack, but they are busting terrorist plots or are they leading them? He goes on to show story after short story where the FBI was getting into groups or creating groups and then targeting the most vulnerable, the the lowest on the ladder, and then involving them in some sort of a plot and then arresting. If this is true, and this is a pattern, which he says it is, then the FBI, why wouldn't they be doing that in the January 6th? Uh, attack on the Capitol. And there are several things that say that something is wrong here. For instance, there are thousands of hours of, uh, of videotape of surveillance. Why, was the sur- why have the surveillance tapes not been released? Now, you could say it's because it shows some good things, but they would point out that it might show that the FBI or the local police were actually letting some of these people in. Also, we know that the um, that Parler alerted the FBI days before, saying that there is something going on for January 6th. Why didn't the FBI move on that? Now, they are talking about how the unindicted co-conspirators, and this is the argument that is going back and forth uh, with the media, that uh, the unindicted co-conspirators are FBI agents, or maybe they're not FBI agents. We don't know, yada, 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 yada. And they're saying this is destroying the point of Tucker Carlson and the revolver and Glenn Greenwald. But he says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It doesn't 
refer to FBI informants or operatives as unindicted co-conspirators. It, it, it doesn't usually refer to FBI informants like that. However, numerous references to person one or person two could very well, indeed the case of the FBI-directed plot to kidnap Governor Whitmer, Whitmer could list them this way. In the Whitmer case, it was CHS1, CHS2, confidential human source. That's how the FBI informants drove the plot to gov- uh, to uh, kidnap Governor Whitmer. That's how they were referenced. These are common tactics, says Glenn, Glenn Greenwald, that they use to um, reference the acts of their own informants without revealing their identity. Now, he says, even if all of that doesn't play a role, he says there's a bigger question that has to be answered. And nobody seems to be asking this. How is it remotely credible the FBI did not have informants in these three groups that they've been identifying as major threats for years, especially given the reporting that the leader of the Proud Boys, conveniently arrested the day before January 6th, was an FBI informant in the past, along with the confirmed reporting that the FBI had multiple informants in the Michigan Three Percenters case. So if this is so crazy and the FBI was taken by surprise, why have they been saying this is so dangerous, but they haven't they don't have any informants inside? Why are the low level protesters being charged with major crimes while the alleged organizers of this riot and the leaders of these groups have not been charged? Why are the enormous amounts of video surveillance footage from January 6th still being held? What happened to the alleged planting of pipe bombs near the Capitol? Why did the FBI not take more aggressive action given the once denied but now confirmed fact that social media platform Parler sent the FBI advanced warnings of specific plots of the use of violence at the Capitol? So if the FBI had all of this information and did nothing, that's really important that we find out why. Is it another intelligence failure? I thought we corrected that with 9-11. Why did this happen? Why did their why were they informed and not do anything? Why did they say this was such a great these three groups are grave grave problems but they didn't have any intel on them? Those things don't make sense. And they could just be that the FBI sucks. It could also be there's something else going on. How would you summarize the accusation here? from you know uh, glenn greenwald and tucker carlson like is the idea that essentially the fbi uh they had informants and they tried to dupe low-level people into starting this attack like like as he insinuates kind of with the islamic terrorism cases in the past and then it they just allowed the the january 6th thing to happen without preparing it to bust low level members of these groups like what what what's the what's the working theory so, here i would say that that is the working theory i'm i'm not saying that that's a true theory i right. don't know but there's enough questions to be asked now um because some things just don't make sense and they do allegedly according to glenn greenwald and others they have done this with low-level Muslims um, and, um, and, and, and people they, they deemed easy picking. Right. And so they've done it before. They did it with Gre- uh, Gretchen, Gretchen Whitmire, where they were involved in the planning of the kidnapping, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's kind of the chicken and the egg. Which one came first? Did the FBI come in and plant these seeds? Uh, or did the FBI come in and just watch it and play along and then grab them? Notable, Were they already doing that? It seems to me a notable difference between these situations is that the attack happened, right? Like the riot occurred. Where, like, if you're gonna, if you're going to lure and, so, and dupe in some low-level Muslim terrorists into a fake terrorist attack, you don't actually blow up the building at the end. 
right? And here, like, there's this riot to take over the Capitol that was planned by some of them, and then they didn't actually pl- they didn't plan to stop it Correct. in any way. So they, are they it, okay. the actual you know riot occurred? So the so the the accusation there is is and it's not even an accusation; it's a question. Sure. Is there an element of the FBI that wanted this to happen, allowed this to happen, mm-hmm. um, to be able to come up with more, you know, a new Patriot Act, right, a right. new war on terror? That's the question that has to be answered uh, through the answering of the other questions, like, if this was the biggest threat, and you guys said it, those three organizations, if they were such a threat, why didn't you stop it? Why did it happen? You had informants there. You had to have. And if you didn't, why didn't you? They should. They should have had informants so, there, for sure. They should have. And it's it's unreasonable to think that they didn't. Right. And if you were informed by Parler, why didn't you stop it? Is there a new war on terror and the answer is uh yeah it kind of looks it kind of looks like it now i don't know about the fbi connection but that's the way the white house is moving